y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. Hey, it's Caroline. Kayline. We're on? back. Kayline? K oh K dash line. She just changed it. I just changed my name real quick. Just why not? Hey, we're back and this is an off day. It's not thirsty Thursday, but we're still thirsty. We we're, are still thirsty. Yeah, I mean every day's a good day for happy hour. Oh, you need a refill. I'm empty. I'm oh, embarrassed. Man. I'm embarrassed. She's making up all the words today. You don't ever say you're embarrassed? Not um. Om. Why? I mean, because you're embarrassed. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed to say it like I'm that. I'm going to make up new words so I can submit them to the dictionary. So what we're going to try is a couple things. And um, we are avid podcast listeners. I've got a ton of faves. Caroline has a trillion faves. <laughs> so many faves I forget. But I've been loving Morbid and yeah. Crime Junkie and True Crime Garage. And I even listened to a couple of Southern Fried, wait. Chicken? Nope. Southern Fried Crime. True Crime. Southern Fried Crime. Shredder Tried? <laughs> you can't talk either. <laughs> I'm Maybe sorry if I butchered that. I can't think. <laughs> you should be embarrassed about that. I'm real embarrassed. You should be real embarrassed. <laughs> and so... We, Caroline, a lot of our text back and forth is these news articles. How about when I just randomly send you these articles? I'm and like, ah. like, and it's usually at five in the morning because she's <laughs> about to run boot camp or it's in the middle of boot I camp. Get, I get your texts like they're from like 12 o'clock at night or whatever, like 11, which it doesn't wake she's me up because bed. I'm asleep. Yeah. And I see him in the morning and then I got to respond right away because I'm awake. Yeah. So I'm pissed that I'm. She's pissed because I text her at midnight, but I'm pissed because she's texting me. Well, at I'm like, 5 I hope you got your phone on silent because I had to respond. Never. I'm too paranoid to. Like, what oh, if I'm, I'm on me? silent. I have like 13 sound machines. I got my fan on. I have my sound <laughs> machine plugged in that's on. I got my phone sound machine. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't do hear not anything. spend the night with her. You have but all have, the things. But listen, the dogs hear things. And, okay, you know, people stay away from houses with dogs. Yeah. Actually, they did interview a guy that used to rob houses, and he says two things keeps them away. Is a, um, like, a alarm. A, a six-foot-tall person in the house who's. Mm, no. It is an alarm sign in your front yard saying, no, your house is protected, and a beware of dog sign. What if you don't have those signs, but you have an Put alarm and a dog? Put them up because they will pass your house. Let me tell you that or there's I a good chance they think, will. So the other day, I'm going to tell you this real quick story. I was t about to run camp, and I had to go under this in this park at a gazebo, and I'm just uh, there by myself waiting for the people to show up. And this guy comes in, and he has like a Coke can, like he's about to drink a Coke, and he's just walking in. But I'm like, I'm not even scared because first of all. If somebody was going to try to murder me, I'm six feet tall. That would be a, like a heavy body to have to like drag and put into a trunk. Y and like, you can't fit in a trunk. And they'll need a leg. They need just to think about rooms. how heavy these legs are. I mean, I have the longest femurs you could ever imagine. Yes. That that would be way. They would not. They'd be like, no, that's Once too again, much work. Once again, somebody needs to breed with her because she's going to give you a D1 I'm baby. I'm telling you, I won't get murdered because of that. I'm not even scared. Don't challenge anybody. True. So I found an article. I have a book club here in Waco, and it's our Crime and Wine book club. And we're pretty amazing. We've been going for about three years, minus 2020. It's been kind of shitty. Um, we've only met a couple times. But um, they put random stuff on our page. So this was an article that Shannon put on her page, and it is titled... Texas woman wakes up to blood dripping from the ceiling. Did you see that? No, I saw it when you sent it to me, or maybe I, I might have, I don't, I think I did see it, but I don't remember the story. Okay, so I read it the other night, so I need to, I need to refresh myself. However, this is an El, has happened in Laredo, Texas, but this woman is from El Paso, so that's down deep, deep, deep in Texas, right? She wakes up covered in blood. Like, how do you wake up? Do you feel like your mouth, like, 
how do you wake up covered in blood? Uh, so you, uh, listen, I wake up sometimes and I'm like sweating. So if I were to be like, oh, I'm sweating, but then I'm looking, I'm like, oh, hell, this is blood. No. Oh, yes. Well, she discovered that it was not sweat. It was blood. And it was coming from the apartment above her. Was she under Zach and Abby's apartment? She did she not live in the voodoo house. Living in that voodoo house and <laughs> she didn't even know. I, I don't know if they've heard that podcast yet, but we'll see. Well, so she calls 911, as any smart person would do. For right? sure. Um, and her name was Anna. And so Anna said that the blood covered her bed, her walls, furniture, and her hair. And was coming from above. So she's the below apartment. And a man lived there. And he was like an older man. Like ages 55 through 70. I don't know why that's such a big range. He had died. Right? Oh. Okay. But I'm thinking, who killed this man? Why is all this blood coming out? Yeah. Why did the police say this man died of natural causes? I mean, and you're bleeding everywhere enough to where it's going to leak through the ceiling and go all the way to your downstairs neighbor I on mean, her stuff? That is why I have this That's big question mark. It is a little sus. So police say he died from natural causes and he had been decomposing they for on five it. or six days. Mm-hmm. But decomposing, does that mean your body like just starts excreting? I mean, your blood starts excreting no, from your body? I mean, I don't think so. You have to be like stabbed oh. and stuff. No. You don't just so die. You don't just listen die. Listen to this. Oh, okay. She sleeps with the ceiling fan on, as I'm sure you do. Oh, for sure. Okay. And 65 degrees. So when he died, he died directly above where her ceiling fan is placed in her apartment. Oh, don't tell me it's splattered everywhere. <laughs> her <laughs> ceiling fan was <laughs> on. It's splattered everywhere. And oh, the blood no. was dripping from her <laughs> carpet. Down <laughs> to her apartment, oh. to her ceiling fan, and it was going. Oh, no. It was like a, you ever put a towel on the ceiling fan? Just, My oh, friend Eric no. used to put confetti on the ceiling <laughs> fan blades, <laughs> blades and turn them on, and there was like confetti all over the room. So imagine that being fan, blood. I mean, my ceiling fan has dust. Yeah. It does spray everywhere, but. <laughs> but still. But that's terrible. Ew. So it Ew. seeped through her ceiling, and it got all over her. She had only been living there for about a year and a half, but <gasps> has decided not to renew her lease. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> Way to go, landlord, ding, for letting ding, her ding. get out of her lease. I thought that was great, and I wanted to share that with everybody. El Paso, Tech or Laredo, Texas, El Paso woman. Give it up for Anna. Yeah, Sh- Anna. Or Anna. I think it's probably Anna. Oh, are we snapping? <laughs> I don't know. I just Caroline, what do you have? Okay. So this one I saw, I think, over around Christmas time. And I oh. really thought it was funny because it was just crazy. A- and sad. I mean, obviously sad, but it's like so insane. Okay, it, the the heading or the title was man propped slain wife on couch, then had kids open Christmas gifts in front of body, prosecutors say. <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I can't. Click. You know that. Gonna, I, you know I'm gonna click on that when I see that heading. I'm like, what? So I'm gonna read you the article. It says, at the time of 2011, or at at the time of her 2011 death, the kids were eight and three, and the couple also shared a seven week old baby. Prosecutors say a California man allegedly killed his wife and propped her up on Christmas morning for their kids to open gifts in front of her body. Orange oh. County registered Mercury News and Associated Press report. William William Wallace. Who's that? That name sounds familiar. Wayne Walker. Wayne Wayne Wright. Wayne Wright. William Wayne Wright. The Atlanta child uh, was Wayne. Anyway, that that name reminded me of it. Anyway, his name's William Wallace of Anaheim, California. He was charged in the 2011. Williams. Wayne Williams. Wayne Williams. There you go. Uh, charged in the killing of his wife. Zazel Preston, 26, uh, allegedly, which allegedly occurred during a violent argument on Christmas Eve that year. So according to Orange County Register, during the trial on Monday, whatever that Monday, the prosecutors claimed that on Christmas morning, Wallace placed her body on the sofa with sunglasses on 
Mama had a hangover. And proceeded to tell the kids as they opened their gifts, uh, Mommy got drunk <laughs> and ruined Christmas. <laughs> oh, my god! I can't. Uh, okay. And so at the time, Wallace's two daughters, eight and three, they had two daughters, eight and three. The couple, we all understand, she had new, they had a newborn. Preston was studying to become a domestic violence counselor at the time. The, the mama or the, the daddy? The mama. The mama. Okay. And I think. And uh, as for what happened on Christmas Eve, Wallace's attorneys claimed that his that the client her, their client was being accused of something that was not his fault, and that Preston got drunk and fell on the glass table, hitting her head. Okay, so it's not his fault. And so calling the police, he just props her up on the couch. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Witnesses painted an alleged picture of repeated violent behavior from Wallace toward Preston. And the relatives of Preston also alleged that uh, they told investigators that Wallace had threatened to kill his wife before. And... The, it says this Christmas story does not have a happy ending. And unfortunately, this is not just a story. It's real life. So it's they s- I guess they had the trial and the defense attorney told the jurors that you will hear about this relationship that was full of arguing and yelling, but also a lot of love. Oh, mm. my. Wallace has been in jail since. He was arrested on Christmas Day, 2011, in lieu of a $100 million bail. He faces first-degree murder. I mean, he should. He should. Because if he was innocent, he would have called the police immediately. I mean, like, who? I understand you don't want to ruin your kids. Christmas, somebody up. But you didn't make it any better and by faking the death. And sunglasses on them and sets them there. And it's like, oh, mommy was drunk and she ruined Christmas. Sometimes they make Christmas better. (laughs) She was not drunk. She was dead. She was dead. But that's, you know, if you want to know more about it, go research it. So I have one more, and it's kind of sad, okay? But ridiculous. Okay. Okay? So this is um, a New York, an ex-New York police Officer. officer. And he was accused in his son's death. And his son has autism. And I'm a special educator, so that's, like, this holds up. Ooh, this was really hard to Oh, yeah, that's going to wa- be. L- read. So what happened is his name is Michael Valva, and he had a girlfriend named Angela Polina. And allegedly, they put their autistic son named Thomas in the garage when it was 19 degrees outside. Why? And did not let him come inside. I mean, I don't know, because their dog, Bella, was allowed to sleep inside in the heat. Oh. So, I know a lot of you dog lovers. I know, that's Trust, love your dogs more than you trust some adults. But this is taking it To a whole new level. I mean, that's your child. Yeah, this is your child. I mean, they're both your child, but that's your child. I mean, let them both be warm. That's fair. They're now facing um, murder charges, and this kid was eight years old, all right? So this happened just now, like in January, and what happened is they had a housekeeper. So this isn't like a poor family that maybe didn't have heat, because everybody else had heat. Their housekeeper came in, and she heard weeping and crying, and so she asked girlfriend, what's who is that what is that and they says oh well thomas fell on his way to the bus but he'll be okay and so housekeeper was like oh yeah he'll be fine then she sees michael and girlfriend bringing thomas up from like the garage basement area and he's unconscious Mm. so then they administer cpr and he ends up dying of hypothermia. What? And the dog is just fine. I don't even know what kind of dog it is, but it's <laughs> sad. Ridiculously sad. So don't be a Michael. And he oh. wasn't a cop at the time. Like, he had stopped being a cop in 2020 for whatever reason. So they reason, just probably put him in the garage? I mean, like, was he? It doesn't say. I mean, 
We don't know because we're just doing little articles. Clips. Yeah, just little bit so of articles. But we don't have all I mean, the details. But we just I was a we're s- just reading what catches yeah. our eye. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure kids having kids with special needs is hard. But well, yeah. there's no there's no reason. I mean, ask for help. Take them to the fire department. Um, go to your go to your teacher. Like I was a special ed teacher. Yeah, like yeah, I would yeah. be devastated. To bring me bring me my students. Don't oh. do that to them. So wow, sweet little Michael's an angel now. Um, so I don't know why I ended that on a sad note. I probably should have started on a sad note. And okay, but I can do note. one more. Okay, if you want me to do one more, yeah. Okay, this is this is pretty recent. This is a uh, very Morphew. Morphew. Mm. He's the one who, like a year ago, he's like said his wife disappeared and fell off the bike and all that stuff. Yes. Okay, so this just came out like uh. Really, just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I remember I the think. new update on this Barry Morph Morphew, and the the headline that I'm gonna read is Barry Morphew allegedly tried to cast a presidential ballot in his missing wife Suzanne's <laughs> name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it says it was stunning to see that that ballot in our batches. The county clerk said Lori Mitchell said of seeing a ballot in Suzanne Morphew's name. So it's that almost six months after Suzanne had disappeared, her husband, Barry, who had been accused of killing her, fraudulently submitted a presidential ballot in her name. So in addition to the charges of first-degree murder, Barry is now also facing charges of felony forgery of public records, a misdemeanor of election mail ballot offenses, after he allegedly tried to cast an extra vote in former, former President Donald Trump Former. That's what I said. In his wife's name, according to an arrest warrant. Um, County clerk called the sheriff's office to report the case of the alleged fraud. And they were like, uh, the yeah, we received this ballot for, from Suzanne, mother of two, who has been missing since May 2020. And so the county clerk reali- knew that that was like a missing or probably dead person so she realized that right yeah, yeah. so oh he's so the the uh they said i felt i should contact the sheriff who said this mitchell mitchell i already forgot who mitchell is i felt i should contact the sheriff when i saw the name mitchell told yeah the news show yeah so he was like shocked when he saw it and then the ballot did not leave <coughs> suzanne's signature and the voter's signature and all these things so <coughs> Uh, months later, April 22nd, federal FBI agents questioned Barry as to why he submitted the ballot. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> just because I wanted Trump to win, Barry allegedly responded, according to the court documents. He went on to tell investigators that he just thought it would give Trump an extra vote. And it was the vote that his wife would likely cast if she had not disappeared months earlier. I mean. And he's like, I know she was going to vote for Trump anyway. So when the FBI agents asked him whether he realized if it was illegal to cast a vote, and he responded, I didn't know you couldn't do that for your <laughs> spouse. I, mean. <laughs> I can't. And so Suzanne vanished on Mother's Day of 2020. Okay. Oh, she was re- on Mother's Day. I yeah. Didn't even realize yeah. Until then. And all this is coming back up this Mother's yes, Day. Yes. Yes. So it's like she was reported missing May 10th, 2020, after the couple's daughters, who had been away on a camping trip, oh, how convenient, um, asked the neighbor to check on their mother when they were unable to reach her. Suzanne's bike was discovered abandoned in a ravine later that night. And although her body was never discovered, the uh, sheriff's sheriff's uh, office announced that earlier that month that Barry had been charged with first degree murder, tamp because he was tampering with physical evidence, and attempted to influence a public servant in his wife's disappearance. So Barry was advised of the new charges against him related to the alleged alleged voter fraud. In a virtual hearing, his bond is set at a thousand dollars. Um, what's the story? Okay, that's that's what this story was about. So we wow. gotta get to the actual. Uh, well, maybe next time I'll tell you about the actual mur- Yep, case. Yeah. But basically, he's. W- did she say she's riding her bike and she fell off a cliff? That's or what. That's what something? he's saying. I know. I or do know it? that from some of the other s- uh, articles I've seen that he like went on f- 
he went on Facebook after she went missing and like did this Facebook live. It Had was like video. begging, yeah, yeah, like this video begging for her. It was to basically come back like Chris Watts' fake ass video. Yes. Like there was no genuine emotion behind it. Yes. And so then I guess they must have found out about this voter fraud and they kind of put all the dots together and they're like, oh, uh, this is all fake and you really are the murderer. And yeah. But we sh I'll well dot, dot, dot on that dot, one. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Those are really Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's end with this. It's an email from a listener. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I already got an email. So we're basically famous. Famous. And we're going to sign autographs. Yeah. We'll soon. Tomorrow. Let's practice them. Okay. So we're in Waco, Texas. Remember that. And we have a hospital that basically everybody in Waco was born at this hospital. It used to be called Hillcrest. Yep. And my uh, I'm obviously I was born there, but my one of my younger sisters was born there. And whenever my parents uh, were well, when my stepmom was giving birth, they their car got robbed at Hillcrest. Yes. It got broken into. Oh, yeah. So they okay. like got all their stuff, like all like took, you know, the all the baby stuff that was in there. I mean, they oh just totally man. like robbed the car. Well, it was in the center of town in like this North Waco neighborhood. I didn't know it to be a horrible neighborhood, but you know, maybe yeah, it's somebody bad. It's was a, a little. It's a bad spot. No. Oh, it's not a bad no, spot. Okay, it's, it's a good it's spot. Not, yeah. Every it's spot good. is good. It's North Town. <laughs> 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 it's North Waco. So here is this email from an anonymous emailer. One of the reasons. Okay, so let me tell you, Hillcrest is not Hillcrest anymore. We rebuilt on the other side of town. It's now Baylor, Scott, and White. Okay, so Hillcrest Hospital is really no longer. One of the reasons the old Hillcrest Hospital is recently torn down is it was too haunted to occupy. Dot, dot, dot. Doctors that work there told countless stories of their personal experiences. One involved a beloved nurse that worked there. She became pregnant. But as pregnancy progressed, she developed a forebodying feeling that her birth would take her life. So she expressed this ominous feeling to her nurse, co-workers, and to her OB-GYN. Both reassured her that her pregnancy was normal and there was nothing to worry about. Her concerns extended to writing a goodbye note to her husband and putting it at the bottom of her birthing bag that's how passionately she felt about this feeling as fate would have it during her birth she experienced an incredibly rare complication a cord embolism and tragically passed away uh -uh. while her family waited in the waiting room for news on the birth they witnessed the healthy baby being taken to the nursery from the maternity ward then soon after, her mother witnessed her hospital gowned daughter walk from the maternity ward into the nursery. Hmm, what? Moments later, the doctor came from the maternity ward to give the sad news to the family. Yet her mother already knew. When the new Hillcrest was being constructed, the nurses wanted to recreate the iconic waiting room that was at the old Hillcrest. Okay? Uh -huh. So new hospital, they want to look the the old hospital. One nurse was tasked with going to the old Hills Crest to take a picture. He attaches this picture, and mm -hmm. we're going to put it on, and on uh, Instagram. This attached picture is the one she took, okay? When she showed it to her nursing peers the next day at the new Hillcrest Maternity Ward, now called Baylor Scott, or I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, immediately someone recognized their old nursing friend and colleague circled in the attached picture, but the purse taking the picture hadn't even seen her in the image until that moment. So the person taking the picture and there's like a mirror, but they see their dead friend nurse <gasps> in the mirror, like a reflection. I asked the recently retired Hillcrest CEO, CEO if, somebody, if, um, if somebody's and I could formally investigate paranormal phenomena. But while the old hospital was still up for sale, he thought that any rumors <gasps> would impede the potential sale. 
Then it was slated for demolition <gasps> immediately <gasps> after that. So many crazy stories exist about the old Hillcrest. Ask any doctor that worked there or knew someone who did, and the stories would flow. <gasps> if you do discuss this, I would like to remain anonymous. So this picture is pretty legit, and we will post that. So Okay, um, then there's actually a response yeah. to that email. Well, I responded. Yeah. Okay, and then he sent something else. So, we had a mutual friend. Oh, I'm just yeah. now seeing it. Yeah, we had a mutual friend, and or mutual person, and um. Here, let me see. Here's the here's the response to that. So many crazy stories of ghostly appearances are told of the old Hillcrest Hospital. After it closed, it was still used as quarters for visiting doctors, doing locum tenenum. Sorry if I said that wrong. Work temporary employment of doctors to fill a slot until a full size. Uh, it's a sub. Uh, sounds like a sub doctor. Uh huh. So, um, one such story is a doctor was entering the elevator from a higher floor to leave for his shift. Upon entering the elevator, he saw a distressed patient in a gown. She was crying. He asked her if she was okay. He, she just looked blankly at him. Then the elevator stopped on the next floor and she exited. The doctor visited the security office and when they both reviewed the video, only the doctor was seen. <gasps> there was no patient. These types of stories are endless. Oh, shit. So that is a story of the Hillcrest Hospital that is now I gone. I love that story so oh my gosh we got to get more of those if you have any hillcrest hospital or we got a little haunted cameron park any of your things okay send and them to there's that haunted house like in elmont somebody tagged me on something about that you know that the only haunted house in yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I, d I didn't I didn't see what the article said, but it was something about I don't know if it's for sale or all these haunted things that are going on in that. I think it's just an actual haunted house that people it tour during Halloween. Like it's yeah, but it's there was an issue. There was like a oh a haunted issue. Oh, somebody I don't know. said we should do a story about it, but I don't I didn't see what it was. Okay. But I don't know if you knew anything about it. Nope, don't. And I'm from Elmont. Dang it, mm -hmm. E Town. Yep, that's where Parker from too. Oh yeah. There is a Yorkie person there. Yeah, she her teeth fall out when you talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> she got goats and she got dishwasher and a dryer in the front yard. Everything. She oh, okay. Neighbor from C Town for you. <laughs> so y'all email us bloody happy hour at gmail dot com. Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. Go find us. Go like us. Twitter. Facebook. Um, and you can message us if you want to. Yeah, uh, do it. Do all the things. All the things. And we will see y'all Thursday for Thirsty Thursday. Yeah, let us know what we should drink. Yes. Ooh. Or if you want to bring us a drink, do it. Peace out, y'all. Bye. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.